Hello, so this video is for LUM students doing their dissertation. So my name is Andy Holgate, I'm one of the faculty librarians here at Lancaster and I'm going to guide you through some of the resources that you may have used before and some that you won't have used before that can help you with your dissertation research. Now, we're starting here on the OneSearch homepage, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time on OneSearch because I'm hoping that by the time you've reached your dissertation, you're already quite familiar with this and you know what you're doing with it. So what I just wanted to point out was the advanced search. So going into the advanced search, this type of search gives you more control over how you search. You can search in any field. And from here, you can search by title, author, subject, description, and a few other things as well. Description is quite a good one to search by. A description, particularly when you're looking at articles, is the um, abstract or a paragraph summarizing the whole article. So if you have confidence in your keywords, realistically, if the articles that you're looking for have that keyword in, they should be in the description or abstract. So that can be a really good way of narrowing down your search results within OneSearch and indeed within some specialist databases. So we'll have a look at that in a second. You can also search with and, or, or not, and these will give you various different results. So using not, for instance, will take a word and exclude that from the results. So if you was doing a dissertation and you were looking for um, financial markets, you could put financial markets not emerging and that would then show you just results for the established financial markets. So that's the type of thing you can do with not. Okay. An AND search will combine your search terms. So you get the overlap between the two and that's your results. Okay. Or will give you the results for all of your search terms separately in one big bundle. So that's a much wider search. If you want to know more about this, you could have a look at our search in the literature subject guide, which I'll point out to you a little bit later on in this video. So let's search. As I use the example of financial markets, let's go with that. So if I search for financial markets, it's found 27 million results. Now, one of the ways that I can narrow that down is to put that in speech marks. And that will then force the search engine or OneSearch to look for that as a phrase with no gaps in between. I'm now down to a million results. So it's still an insane amount. So this is where we then go, OK, let's change any field to description and search. I'm down to 529 results, so much, much narrower. Then, if I search for not and emerging, I'm down to 415 results, a much more manageable set of results. I can add a new line in here if I wish to, and I can add more lines and more lines. I can also go to material type and change that and say okay let's just look at thesis and dissertations and I can do that if I wish to so let's just in this instance do that it's not found any records so that's gone too narrow so let's leave it on articles and now down to 44 I can narrow this down further by using the refine my results over this side and clicking on peer reviewed journals down to 24. Then again going down to this side here I've got various different things I can look at subject terms so I can choose tick boxes here and go through them and click on them. If I know a certain journal title I can go through journal titles and add them. I can click on show more and it'll give me a list of them so I can click on here here and here and it'll show me the articles that I'm interested or the journals that I want to see things from. I can play around with the creation date and say only show me the last 10 years and 
and I'm now down to 16 results. Bear in mind we started with 27 million results a few minutes ago. Now 16 results has gone too narrow. So this is just an example of you know doing your search and going too narrow. So you may want to then widen it back out and search again and work out where the search went too narrow if there's not enough things there for you to go through. So play around with your searches. Only you will know when you've got enough there to have a good look through. So if I was interested in, for instance, this article here, I can click on full text available. It will give me a link to where it's available at and I can click on that and follow it through. So here's the article. I can scroll down here and I can see all the details. I've got subject terms here. I've got author supplied keywords, which can always be useful to have a look at because that's the author saying, if I was going to search for my article, this is what I'd search for. I've got that abstract again, that paragraph or two summarizing the whole article. And if I scroll back up, I'll have the link to the full text, either in PDF format or HTML. When I click on the link, it opens up and I can start reading that there. I can download it, I can print it, a whole host of other options. Whenever you go into any journal article, always have a look to see what tools it offers you. For this one, for instance, it can send it to Google Drive. You can print it, email it, put it in a folder if you sign up with this. Each different journal or database will offer different things. So that was finding an article using the OneSearch advanced search. Hopefully you found that quite useful. Now just to remind you, if I scroll back up, I've got options here for exporting this reference to things like EndNote Web or Mendeley. Have a look at the videos that we have on YouTube and Planet Estream around using this software. Reference Manager software can save you hours of time when it comes to a dissertation. It really can. If you need help with setting any of this up, then please get in contact with either myself or Caroline and we can talk you through doing this as well. If you don't want to use reference software, remember OneSearch has an, on, uh, has an inbuilt citation tool. So you can click on here and there's the citation done and you can copy and paste that. But as it says here, remember to check citations for accuracy before including them in your work. These are computer generated and they can make mistakes. So that was using OneSearch. We are now going to look at some more um, specialized resources now that you can use for your dissertation and we'll do this by going into our subject guide. So I'm going to scroll down the library homepage here until I see the bank of icons and then I'm going to click on subject guides. There is a subject guide here for accounting and finance and there is one here for business and management. Both of them are exactly the same. So if I click on accounting and finance you will see that it gives me the business guide and it also gives me a guide called searching the literature. Let's have a very quick look at this. This is where if you spend a good 10 or 15 minutes reading through the information on this guide it will bring you up to date and up to speed with the types of things you can do for your search strategy, the literature searching process, defining your question, formulating your search. So it will talk about using different terms within one search broader and narrower terms, British and American spelling, changes in um, terminology, all that type of thing. You will also get search tips, so it will talk about using wildcards. There is a video there explaining and, or, or not, which we touched on with the advanced search, and a whole host of other things about cited reference searching using Google and Scopus, sorry, Google Scholar and Scopus, hand searching and a whole host of other things. At dissertation stage you really should be starting to look at all of this information that's in this guide, processing it and applying it to your research. So spend some time with this, you won't regret it. Now let's go into the business and management guide. So from here at the top you've got a OneSearch search box and then under getting started you've got a whole host of links to sections on this page and as you scroll down you have different sections here on finding books, articles, etc. I'll touch on a few of these in a minute or two. So when it comes to using a key database this could be better at dissertation stage possibly than using OneSearch. You may find that OneSearch just swamps you so you might want to come to maybe one or two key business databases and run your searches there. It could be the difference between getting several thousand results and 20 odd million in one search. 
so these will give you much more focused results. Business Source Complete is our largest one. Combine this with something like ProQuest and you'll be doing very, very well in the literature that you're finding. Business Source Complete we've seen already. This is where we found our journal article in the previous section of this video. So I won't spend any time on this. What I will say is if you're struggling with your um, key terms, you can use the thesaurus here. So if I type in audit, because I'm struggling to see what keywords I could use, I can click on browse and it gives me the various different things and options here. So if I want to look at auditing, I can click on there, it tells me what it is, it gives me broader terms, it gives me narrower terms. And every one of these that I click on is hyperlinked so I can get more keywords. If I see one that I want to use a search for, I just put a link next to it, a tick next to it, add it to my search and that will add that into my search and then search for it. So Business Source Complete is very good for that type of thing. Going into ProQuest Business Databases, this is where you will find um, some very specialist databases, certainly for accounting and finance students, um, also for entrepreneurship students, etc. Once you go into this, if you click on Change Databases, you will see what's involved in the premium collection here. You may want to choose all of these and go through them, or you may want to choose a very specialist one. So as you can see, if you're an entrepreneurship student, you might want to just tick the entrepreneurship database. If you're a finance student, you may want to untick all of them. And then choose accounting, tax and banking. And the JP Morgan research. Once you do that, if you click on use selected databases. And then do your search. And I'll do business tax evasion and um, instead of searching anywhere we'll search in the abstract you can see the whole host of different uh, options you've got there I'll tell that to search I've got 640 results I can see where these are coming from I can limit to full text I can limit to peer-reviewed I've got the options here of various different types. So if I wanted to look at dissertations and thesis, it's found one there that I can have a look at. So if I take that back out, look at scholarly journals, I can look at 127 results. Now, if full text is available, you will see a link to either the HTML or the PDF. If full text is not available, you will see a link saying find it when you click on this it will open one search back up and it will see if it's available in any other place. Now if you register with the database and this goes for any of them it will let you save your alert, save your search, it will also let you create an alert, create an RSS feed and a whole host of other things which will help you keep up to date. Um, these are really really useful tools particularly at dissertation stage where you'll be expected to keep um, showing that you're researching, they're showing you reading the most recent things. So there's all of that type of thing that you can do. So that was using some of our uh, subject key specific databases. Now I also wanted to point out to you a database called Sage Research Methods. So although Sage Research Methods will not give you um, subject specific uh, data articles, it will become or should become the backbone of your research methodology. It will give you all sorts of things around um, research methods, how to formulate questionnaires, focus groups, etc. There's different sections, there's different books, there's case studies, reference sections, video, etc. So you could just do a keyword search. So if I search for um, focus group we can see the results. Now the first thing you should do is change all content to content available to me and then change the discipline from select all to business and management. You can further narrow down by content type 
so you can go through the different things and look at books, video, etc. When you find one that you want to have a look at, so if we look at this one, just click on the title, and you can see the various different chapters. You can download it as a PDF, you can go to different sections. There's a whole host of things that you can do. Another way that you can look at Sage Research Methods is through the research tools. There's a methods map. This is a visual way of searching through um, the research methodology. So here's the, the overall map. So when it comes to planning research, you can click here and it shows you the various different things. So if you want to look, for instance, at literature searching, you can click on there and it talks about the various different options. So we can narrow down further or if we just click on show all content for literature search it then takes us back to that search page we narrow down again content available to me narrow down to business and you'll see what's available to you that way so it's worth having a look at sage research methods now if you find yourself in need of um, any market research or company information you'll have to find these through this subject guide here and if you click on this tab you will find various different things about market research I have a separate video completely on market research so I won't spend any time on this I suggest that you look at that and that will give you an idea of what's there I'll just very quickly show you Statista this is the data platform and from here you can type in any search that you want So if I look at financial services industry, we can see what it's finding me. So if I wanted to see the UK financial sector, employment figures from 2001 to 2019, there it is. I can download this as PDF, Excel, a graphic or PowerPoint. It also gives me the source of where this has come from, so that's very good. I can actually click on the citation, change it from APA to Harvard, and there's the citation done for me as well. So I've got all of that type of option. It will give me related statistics, it'll give me some analysis, and there's all sorts of things there. I can scroll down and I'll see other things that are available to me. So there's all sorts of things, and it's giving topics there. So if I want to look at leading banks or RBS, I can click on RBS. And I've got facts there about RBS straight away in front of me I've got all of their details there as well so all of that could be quite useful particularly if you're an accounting and finance student you've also got dossiers there on banking channels in the United Kingdom you've got a dossier on the Royal Bank of Scotland group and a whole host of other things this really is an amazing database for statistics further down you've got three databases FAME, Osiris and Bank Focus these are purely financial databases focusing on companies fame UK based Osiris worldwide and bank focus is purely on uh, the banks and the top banks in the world and it will give you every type of financial statistic ratio that you can think of once you search through them what I will say they're quite difficult to interrogate and different to interrogate so if you need any help with those please do get in contact with Adam myself or Caroline and we'll be more than happy to do that for you and rather aptly there is a chat button there so you can chat with myself and Caroline on Microsoft Teams or if you scroll down on the guide you have our email addresses and contact details there. You may want to use news and media in your research as well and here we have a list of our current newspaper subscriptions including the Financial Times, Access World News and Nexus. But Nexus and Access World News are massive databases of all the major world newspapers updated in real time, all searchable, all very good. The Financial Times speaks for itself, obviously. We've got the current edition and we've got the archive edition. We also have the ft.com off campus link. So if you click on this and sign up with your Lancaster email, you'll be given a one year subscription to the Financial Times. That's well worth doing. The archives underneath, we have things like Bloomberg, The Economist, Financial Times, and a whole host of others. These basically give you every edition of those publications from the start up to the present day if you combine the current subscriptions that are available within one search. Don't be afraid to use quality newspapers in your research. They can back up the academic stuff that you've been reading with real world information. And let's face it, 
the FT is published every day, so it's more up to date than anything else that you can read. So don't be afraid to use that type of thing. You can also use um, media in your research. You've got Box of Broadcast there, which is um, a television portal. It has over a million archives, uh, a million programs in its archive from TV and radio. You can record TV. Um, so you can do all that, you can make clips from TV programs, it's a fantastic resource. You also have the Henry Stewart Talks with nearly a thousand lectures and case studies. This is um, kind of like TED Talks for academics I guess. Um, you can do a keyword search here or if you scroll down to subject areas and click on browse there's finance, accounting and econ economics. You can scroll through that, you can have a look at the featured talks or the case studies and then click on any that are there. So if you're interested in football player financing, you could click on this. From the University of Liverpool Management School. And I'm a lecturer in football finance. So. And you can see the contents there. You can get it as a PDF or you can listen to it. Um, so you've got all of that type of thing. That's the type of thing that HS Talks do. Very, very good information. Good, key stud good, good case studies in there as well. Also on your subject guide you will find links through to dissertations and theses. We've seen the ProQuest ones already. There is also an ethos from the British Library. You can go there and search. You can also find Lancaster dissertations um, in the Pure Portal, which again you can get to from the University Library homepage. Now in, in, the, in the past section I quickly mentioned dissertations and thesis. And you can find them under resources and services on the homepage. And if you come over to this side here, you'll find a link to various different things. If you click on thesis and dissertations, there is the information page there about what you can get hold of. So it's worth having a look at that. If you click on find thesis, you will see links through to where you can find various different theses. Under useful websites, you'll find links there to the Chartered Association of Accountants and other business links. Statistics will take you through, obviously, to Statista, books about statistics, and then statistical resources, labour statistics, market database statistics, um, UK uh, national statistics, etc. So you've got a wealth of information available to you on this subject guide to help you with your dissertation. Now the final thing to mention is how you can get help from myself and Caroline. And if you click on Information 4, click on Faculty Librarians. And if you scroll right down through the information, which I suggest that you have a read of, you will find Book an Appointment. So you can book an appointment with either one of us. Or if you click on Librarians for the Management School, you will find our lovely pictures, what we do, and our contact details there as well. All that remains is for me to wish you good luck with your dissertations. I hope they go well. Please don't be shy. If you do need any, do need any help, please do get in touch with myself and Caroline, and we can hopefully sort you out. Good luck, and thank you for listening.